Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about the various types of sizing dies and why we folding size pretty much exclusively as well as mention some of the other methods of sizing down brass. If you're only interested in learning how to set up a sizing die and you want to skip all the, the lecturing part of it essentially, just go ahead into the next video and I'll just get that information right to you so I don't waste your time. But if you're new or just need a refresher, I'm going to go about or talk about how the basic principles of how a folding sizer die works and why we do it. So for an auto loader, the reason we full length size is for reliability. Um, you can't really neck only size, which means just sizing down the, the top part of the, the, the case, which I'll mention in a second, um, really for auto loaders. So lever actions, ARs, AKs, etc. So that's what we'll be focusing on this series. I'll be hand loading for an AR. Um, I may do a precision series in the future if you guys are interested, but anyway, so what we were looking for is to size the brass base back down to size, bump the shoulder and get the neck tension to proper, well, neck tension so we can reseat a bullet in there. So how this full length sizer die works is when you raise the ram and the case goes into the die, it's going to size down the body, which is the whole flat part here. And this is a 223 case, by the way. Maybe let me zoom in for you just a little bit. So it's gonna size down that case, uh, the whole body right there. It's going, we're going to, if it's set up properly, which it should be, it's gonna bump the shoulder, which is just the angled part of the piece of brass. Fortunately, it's really hard to see on these little 223s right there, right in between. So it's just the angled part and it's going to squeeze down the neck and bring it back out to size or proper neck tension. And, oh, and pop out the primer too. All in one go. So, oops, primer right there. Sharpie's getting dry. Try to get this all back in frame for you. So, except when it runs up, it sizes down the body, which is right around here. Really, it's all up through here. Pushes down the neck. And when we pull the case back or pull the ram back down, it's going to bring the neck back to size or to proper size and pop out that primer. So why do we squeeze down the neck and then pull it back out? Why don't we just squeeze the neck to size and be done? Well, the reason for that is something called a spring back. So brass is, it basically has a tendency to want to go back to the previous state it was in. So it's going to, when you're squeezing it in, it's going to want to go back out. So we squeeze down the neck a little bit more than it needs to be and then pull it back out to compensate for that spring back to get that proper neck tension. So that's why we're squeezing it in and then just pulling it right back out to size. So that's the basics of a folding sizer die and how it works. This is a cutout of a Hornady that I had cut out myself. Totally not a paper printout. Never. Only quality content here. So, as I had mentioned, I was going to talk about some of the other dies. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll do that. So, <clears throat> these, well, this is a body die, a body only die, and then this is a neck sizer die. The reason I have these and the reason I use these is for my precision stuff. So the Reading body die is actually a really excellent and interesting die. It is cut out in the center. Let's see if I can get in there for you. It doesn't have an expander mandrel or expander ball or anything like that. It only sizes down that body and will bump the shoulder a bit to however you set it. That's it. You still need to get that neck tension back in. And I do that with this Lee Collet die. And what this Lee Collet die is, might as well show you. It's a very interesting die, and it's probably the claim to fame for Lee. Um, and honestly, it's my favorite die of theirs. I'm, their dies are okay. I'm not going to get in a flame war with the Lee fans. I, I like their stuff too, but this is um, essentially just a collet. I mean, it's in the name. So this guy pushes up it. Your ram pushes the bottom here, and it pushes up this collet and squeezes down your neck. Now I have some... Uh, aeroshell on here so you can use some high pressure grease if you have one of these dies and are experiencing hang-ups like where it gets stuck put some grease on there um and believe me it will it'll go a long way i did that wrong whatever anyway 
So I'll deal with that later. So basically I use those two in conjunction for my precision stuff. Uh, you can also use an expander mandrel type die by 21st century. Uh, I think Seclair also makes them where you just are pushing down this mandrel from the top to squeeze back your neck uh, to give your give custom neck tension to what you set. But that's more advanced stuff. And I won't really dive into that neither. I don't have a, one of those anyway to, to show you. So back to these two. This is the Hornady that we saw the cutout of. And then this is a Forester. They are the same thing, they're full length sizer dies. However, there's two different approaches to this. This one has an expander ball, and this one has, well, an elliptical mandrel. Now, why that's different, the biggest thing that's different is this expander ball on this Forester sits way higher. You see here, if I put that fly about where it was, you'll see it's way up there. And what that is, what that's doing is when this case body is supported by basically the case body is more supported by the die itself so when you're bringing this back down it sits way higher than way down here so as you're going down it just has more support around the case therefore it's basically more consistent and more consistent neck tension than this one in theory and from my findings nothing scientific just just by noticing that yeah the Forester definitely is a little more consistent on its neck tension the reason I'm going to be using the Hornady is one, because that's all I have for 223, and it's also a great deal. This die by itself is about $40. Now let's bring in what you get for about $40 with the Hornady. You get the bullet seating die, which you will need later on when you're seating bullets. This is, again, this is about 40 bucks. It's a really good deal. However, if you do want a better quality die, I can highly recommend the Forester. Um, that will cost you about, I think, $80 for both the bullet seating die and, um, and the folding sizer die, but it's worth it. So if you really do look at this as an investment and you're going to be doing this for the long haul, I'd either get a Forester or a Redding if you don't mind dropping that kind of money on one. Really good dies. Um, however, if you are wanting to save a little bit, the fit and finish on these Hornady dies are excellent and they're pretty consistent as well. Again, these are my 223. I don't have anything else other than an AR in 223, so it doesn't really matter for me, but it's a really good set for 40 bucks. So anyway, in the next video, I'll be showing you how to set up this die and we will get started. So I will see you in the next video.